listening to the Unleashed Greatness Podcast with your host, Jonathan Mitchell. The best in personal, emotional, spiritual, and business development. Hey everyone, it is I, Jonathan Mitchell. It is Unleashed Greatness for another amazing week here. Thank you for joining in. As always, a sincere gratitude sent to you for just being awesome and for just supporting. What I like to do is just to first off just say um, what we have going on today is our interview day. I have the amazing Clarissa Burt. She is an award-winning actress, international media personality, producer, director, writer, public speaker, a model. She is amazing and and also just a, a very wonderful, warm, kind human being. She does amazing stuff and very appreciative of her taking the time to be on board with us today. Super excited. Uh, this episode is sponsored by naturalmedicinemamas.com. For anything you need to have around natural medicine, please go there to naturalmedicinemamas.com. We have some amazing stuff for men, women, children, like for flu or colds or anxiety or sleep or whatever else you need help with, they got it there. All right, let's go. Unleash Greatness. Hey everyone, this is Jonathan Mitchell. Uh, you're listening to Unleash Greatness. Thank you so much for listening in. I have the one and the only Clarissa Burt on the line with me. I just recently connected with her. Um, <laughs> seriously, if you go over her bio, which I'll, I'll go over with her in a moment, you'll be seriously impressed. She's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us, Clarissa. Hey, it's really good to be here, Jonathan. Thanks. Are you sure your name's not Jason? It's Jonathan. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm for sure. It is for sure. Even though Jason's like the, like the oh, studliest name, I think. It's such a good name. <laughs> Um, um, Jonathan's pretty darn good too. Oh, you're so nice <laughs> to me. Thank you. So Clarissa, I know I've already done a little short bio with you. I always have my guests introduce themselves. If you want to give mm-hmm. us kind of a brief, short overview of who Clarissa is, and we can get in and ask you some questions. Okay. Well, Clarissa, uh, I think, uh, if, you know, if I had to give it a, you know, the a rich version is, um, a, a, a model, I used to model and I did a lot of modeling back in the day when I lived in Europe and that started uh, a really great modeling career after which I went into acting. So I did about 18 different movies while I lived in Europe and then I started television production. So um, one of the things that uh, I worked the hardest on was the um, Miss Universe uh, pageant that I produced three hour live broadcast in prime time with 2000 people sitting in water in front of a castle in Calabria. So they were really, they were really mega uh, productions and I was still in my forties then. So I guess I still had the energy and the chutzpah and the, you know, the need and the want to do something that big. Um, so, you know, I, I've been in media basically my entire life and I absolutely love the medium. I love the way it's changing. I love the way it keeps us connected. One of the things I don't like about it so much is, is, um, is the untruth, not the fake media, but, you know, especially the media that we're teaching to our children, which is, you know, a lot of violence and, uh, and the media that, you know, is, uh, showing images to our kids. First off that, you know, it's way too early for them. I believe some of the stuff they're seeing and the other stuff is, you know, the Photoshopping, you know, right. showing girls that, um, what, you know, perfection looks like, and that's thanks to a computer, to computer render, and it's not reality. So, you know, I love media. I, f- I absolutely adore this medium, but I really uh, have to call it out every once in a while for the, some of the not so great things that, um, that media does and how it portrays, how it portrays untruths. Well, I like how you have a good balance of it. Like you see the, the strengths of it, but also the um, unfortunate side effects of that's been happening. Cause I, I see the same way being in the music industry, seeing a lot of the same things as well. Um, yeah. you also said, you mentioned before we got talking, that you're actually writing a book right now on self-esteem and just that's right. what, what that, what that looks like. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Because, you know, I watched women in my world growing up and I yeah. watched lots of girls after that, you know, as a model, I, I was around a lot of extremely beautiful women. And, uh, as you know, the producer of Miss Universe and director of Miss Universe, um, I certainly, you know, I was always around a lot of beautiful women and I, and I saw their, um, insecurities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw that they never thought they were good enough. I saw that they didn't think they were beauty, beautiful enough. I watched some of the things that they did to themselves and, and, and said about themselves. And I realized, you know, that it's pretty universal. You can be the most beautiful woman on the planet or maybe not as pleasing to the eye. I, I don't know how else to put that, but mm-hmm. God did that. I didn't. And, um, and, and, and it seems as though there, there, there was that one common denominator uh, as far as, 
far as self-esteem was concerned. And, um, and, and so it was, it, it always, it always, uh, it, you know, I was very impassioned by wanting just to take somebody and stop them and shake them and say, but you are great, but you are wonderful. You can do anything, but you are loved, but you are enough, you know, and it's, 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 you know, I, I always felt as though it was my job to, you know, sort of do the little rah, rah session around, um, you know, e- empowering. And I know the words overused, but it really does go straight to the point as the perfect word of empowering girls and women to totally believe in themselves and that, you know, uh, anything, here's the other thing. I say anything is possible. Look, I know that NASA is not going to put me on the next shuttle next week and shoot me to the moon. I just know that's not going to happen. But I, when I say anything is possible, pretty much darned everything that you set your mind to that you want to do, because I don't want to go to the moon. So, you know, um, you can do, and I've seen that in my life over and over again. You know, I've also noticed many different times I, I have been drowned in fear, drowned in fear when I first started modeling, when I first started acting, when I, you know, when, I, when it was time to move on from those things and figure out how I was going, what I was going to do next, what was I capable, what were my abilities, you know, how was, there were so many different things around this rebrand. You know, uh, Jonathan, I'm not a kid anymore, right? So I'm, I'm coming up on 59, almost 60 years old. And no when you, way. I just, oh, oh, no, yeah. I don't oh, believe yeah. that. No oh, way. yeah. Oh, <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Believe me. And so when that, you know, when, when, you, when you are in the business that I'm in, which, you know, is a huge business that, uh, of rejection, modeling, mm-hmm. acting, you know, you go in and you try out and nine times out of 10, you're going to hear, you know, next. Yeah. And so it's one of those kind of businesses that you really have to get a thick skin pretty soon. It doesn't mean, however, that it doesn't hurt a little each time. And so uh, this is another reason why um, I really am really passionate about. Oh, so I was going about the rebrand. The rebrand is just, you know, it's difficult when you get to this age to figure out what's going to be next when you have sort of had the the life that I have. I didn't get, I wasn't in corporate. I didn't work at a bank. I knew, I didn't know where I was going to be, you know, sitting 20 years from now, 10 years from now behind what desk. In fact, I don't sit behind a desk. I travel all over. I have a computer, wherever there's a chair, I plop it. And that's the way I love it. But as you well know, it does come with, with as many risks as it does rewards. Yeah. So when, if you were to take someone like, I mean, one thing I wanted to talk about, well, actually two things. One was like business and career and products, which we'll talk about in a second. But right now, since we're on the topic of like self-esteem and mental health, Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people who, who judge their worth by how many likes they get, how many followers they have, how many blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Whatever that is. What would you say to someone, a girl, a young kid, a guy for that matter, who says, you know, I'm not the best looking person. I'm not the most talented. I'm Mm -hmm. not whatever. Mm-hmm. How do you help them like from day one saying, this is how you build your self-esteem? What would you say? Well, you have to be, because, well, you just have to be the best. First of all, you have to be the best you, yeah. you know, uh, and that's, that's number. And the, the, you know, I think the, the most important thing is we just got to stop comparing ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's intrinsic in the human, you know, in humans, it's, it's what they do. You know, the grass is always greener, but uh, you know, it's truly not. And, uh, and, and it's just an illusion. So when you, when you're comparing yourself to someone else, you know, you're comparing yourself to um, some an ideal that you have set. You stop comparing. Number one, just don't. It's it's not. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work when you compare yourselves to and I, and it's normal. You know, especially kids in school, elementary school, high school. It's kind of how they play themselves out. Mm-hmm. It's a part of, I guess, becoming who you are and knowing who you are, but you're pretty, it's pretty clear to you by the time you're seven, who the mean girls are, who the bullies are, you know, and again, even the bullies are, you know, they do that to make, to pull themselves up, to make themselves look bigger and better because they've got a self esteem issue. Yeah. You know? So when you take a look at that and you see the bully for what they are, you know, you can teach this still to a six, seven year old, they'll get it. They understand, and when they understand it comes from lack or a lack mentality, then it doesn't seem to hurt as much, or maybe not at all. When you, on an everyday basis, for you to personally tap into your own greatness, your creativity, your motivation, what is like one action step that you say, okay, I have to do this to keep myself in a good zone? What do you do to keep yourself in that space? 
because I'm not doing it for me. I'm not doing it for me. Most of what I'm doing is because, you know, and don't and be, believe me when I tell you, there are days that I, I get up that I just, I just, I honestly, you know, you know, what it, I'm an entrepreneur, you are too. And the overwhelm is excruciating at times. Mm -hmm. um, I do most of it by myself. I really don't have any help. I don't have an assistant. I have none of that. So I do from nuts to bolts, which is going to change very quickly because I just can't continue on this path. But right. um, I don't do it just, you know, for me, certainly I want to pay my bills. That's normal. But I get up and, and I continue to go because I know that the, the message, the brand and the message and the messaging, uh, is that important, especially in these times, uh, when, uh, it, you know, these last years, especially since 2008, you know, with the, with the, with the economic crash, a lot of people took, a, a, a huge hit, especially to their, uh, to their, you know, uh, to their egos. They took, it took a, you know, a hit to their pocketbooks. Uh, life changed drastically for a lot of people from living in a home to living in a park or in their car. Um, and there are, I know that I'm not doing this for me. And, that, and I mean that honestly, I just, you know, I, I know that I've been able to touch people's lives in different ways. Somebody had asked me today on the radio show, for example, Example. And they said, what was the one, you know, one of the things you remember? Well, I took a call girl off of the streets of Las Vegas and I brought her into my home in Phoenix for three months. Now, wasn't, you know, it wasn't really the end of the world. And I don't tell you that to impress you. I, I tell you that because the girl needed help and she was crying and she came to me and she said, I need help. And I said, okay, but you're going to come live with me in Cave Creek, Arizona. And it ain't fun. It ain't <laughs> Las Vegas, <laughs> you know? And I'm in bed every night by nine, nine thirty, And, you know, so we just, and she was like, oh, oh yes, please. So anyway, long story short, she brought her stuff. She left, left Vegas. She, and she's a beautiful girl. You know, she was, she was, a, you know, she wasn't, uh, you know, she wasn't, uh, she was a call girl. So a little bit, I guess, higher end. I'm not quite sure if there's a hierarchy there, but anyway, um, anyway, so she came, she lived there for three months. We had a ball. She changed her phone number. She took off the false eyelashes. She changed her foxy license plate on the back of her car, uh, took off the rhinestones from the car. I mean, we just, this is like major makeover. Mm -hmm. And, um, she started to go back to church. She found her faith. She reconnected with her family in Chicago and she's now living with the love of her life. Uh, a beautiful, uh, biz, uh, uh, with a beautiful man in Dallas has a beautiful, uh, business that she's running as a, as a makeup artist. And cause she's fabulous at it. She just needed a leg up. She needed, needed somebody to pull her out of the muck. That's all. I mean, I just happen to be at the right t place in the right time, but you know, I couldn't turn my back on her. And these are the reasons why, and I've done that quite a few times with different girls uh, and women in my life, girls really, because they, you know, like one was my secretary. The other one was my assistant. You know, they were, they, there were, every story had its own, you know, reason why I was just thrilled to be able to um, reach out and, and pull someone out of the muck. And, um, people have helped me along the way too in many different ways yeah. uh, and that's what it's all about you know and we could just get our noses away from our um our smartphones long enough to, to look up just look up look up take a look around who's sitting next to you who's you know who you talking who's next to you on the plane who's next to you on the train you know how can you help the guy on the corner when you come up to the stoplight uh you know all that stuff just a simple smile sometimes jonathan when you walk in you know in, into an elevator good morning Right. But by now, have a great day. It doesn't take a lot sometimes. Honestly, you, you, you know, I don't think that we realize how powerful we really are. And, the, and, the, and the, the power of just kindness and a kind word, you know, or a smile and a hello can change somebody's outlook for, you know, for the day, you know, whatever. Yeah. And here's well, another thing. Here's another thing I like to do, and, I'll, and then I'll shut up. No, but here's another thing that I like to do. I like to try to understand why somebody's in a bad mood or somebody cut me off or, you know, or, or somebody, you know, that didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? Those things that happen where you go, well, I wonder what kind of day they're having. And I wonder how their health is. And I wonder if maybe they have somebody that's dying in the hospital or I wonder, you know, you never know, you know, it's that walk a mile in somebody else's shoes thing. Yeah. Um, I think we're all so quick to judge and so slow to forgive or just, you know, or to just shrug it off and go, that's no big deal. It's okay. You didn't mean it. It wasn't, you know, and I think it, it helps us, uh, it, it helps us greatly get, you know, get through life with a smile, a little bit more of a smile, a little bit more kindness. Is there like some sort of story you could tell, and you can be as vulnerable as you want to, or comfortable to be, 
um, about when you felt like you were like either mediocre or in a bad space and then something shifted inside of you and you said, okay, I'm wanting for something more and you did something differently to it changed your life. Have you ever had an experience like that? And then what was it and what did you do? Well, mediocre and in a bad space for me always now, I was, I was susceptible to depression. Yeah. And, you know, again, being out in the big wide world, basically alone or on your own. And uh, there was very little that I, you know, I, I had a very, I had strength in my grandmother, but she was on the other side of the world. You know, I, there were no cell phones and no internet, you know, so yeah. um, my sister was young and uh, always a, a fan, but everybody was so far away. Um, and, and there there weren't, you know, hugs weren't given out too readily or, you know, that again, that, you know, that support that we all need. Everybody needs it. You know, I don't care. I think I'm as strong and as stoic as they come. But golly, every once in a while, I like to hear a nice kind word or, you know, or, or, or just get a hug. I'm a hugger. You know, envelop her is my sub brand. It's enveloping another. And so, um, you know, I, I would get pretty down sometimes. And, uh, and, uh, and that's when it could spiral and when I would feel pretty mediocre. So for me, the idea that I could get through that and be bigger, better, and bolder on the other side um, was was it was paramount to who I pretty much who I am now, because I know that even if I am going to have a day, a moment, or or, or you know sort if I'm feeling like you know again that overwhelm or uh, you know how am I going to get from point A to point B, I just stop and remember all the times that I wasn't on top of my game, I didn't have the support around me, there was no one to talk to no phone, no internet, nothing. Mm -hmm. And it, and I came through it all the same. Um, I know that now, you know, I'm home, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm I'm home. I got my family around me. I've got great friends. I I have the internet, I've got cell phones, I've got you, Jonathan, and you know, life is great. So, you know, I, I, I don't let myself go, you know, too far before I go, whoop, you know, wait a minute. We've got, you know, we, I want to say save the world, but, you know, we still are, we're still on a mission. And as I had said to you before, the self-esteem regime is really more than a mission. It's a movement yeah. for me. A lot of people, I think, who see people with celebrity status or a lot of uh, you know, Facebook or Instagram followers or whatever, and they think their world's ideal. They never have bad days. And so it's always interesting mm -hmm. to me to hear someone like yourself who has a celebrity status of sorts, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. say, I feel alone sometimes. I need touch. I need support. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. we just don't think that. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's interesting to hear that from you, too. So I'm, I'm wow. glad you're being honest. You know, oh, by the way, everybody, yeah, I mean, everybody's a hum human being. And I think that, I think people really do. Uh, like to hear, you know, the, um, not the imperfections, but you know, that it happens to them and they want to relate, you know, and I, I really do try to stay, I always have tried to stay very relatable. Are there any books <laughs> that you feel like have transformed your life that made you act differently? And then what would it be if you have one? Um, one of the ones that I really like, I think, you know, is, um, Think and Grow Rich, you know, Napoleon Hill. Oh, yeah. I think that, that was, you know, it was pretty, pretty instrumental in keeping, um, me, focused um the other one the other one was really more of a movie than than anything you know i just love the secret because this stuff was all new to me you know it came out like what 10 or 12 years ago or something the secret mm -hmm. and it was a big deal at the time and it was on oprah and it was and it was all about you know um you know just uh we are what what we believe we are we create the life that we uh, have around us and that you know with the law of attraction you can uh, change things drastically in your life. I listen to subliminal tapes frequently, and especially um, when, when I'm either I'm working or going to sleep at times, I'll throw on some subliminal stuff. I'll throw on some higher vibration things that I'll keep in my ears as I'm sleeping. Um, and they, um, they really do seem to work well as well. So there's another resource, right? It's just there at your fingertips, just right there where, you know, we didn't have them as a kid. We, I, we didn't have have that some years ago. So there's, oh, and, I, and by the way, it's just, it's my computer or my phone. I go to YouTube, you know, raise my vibration. Boom. You get a hundred million things. <laughs> you know, That's how simple it is. It's, it's quite that simple. Uh, and again, I love that, you know, diffusing, um, uh, essential oils in the home. I think that they, you know, they, they put them on your, your body as well. They, they, they absolutely do help. 
Well, that was one of the things I was going to ask you about. So you have, I mean, you have the self-esteem book coming out. You have the, the yep. uh, celiac, a gluten-free type book with cookbook yep. and recipes, which yep. is awesome. You have the shop coming out, which by the time this podcast comes out, it'll all be open and stuff there. Um, yeah. And so is that, the is app. your, is your, oh, the app as well. Is your website yeah. the best place for people to get in touch with you and kind of find yes. out what's going yeah. on? Yeah, clarissabert.com. And you can go there and see what's going on. And um, yeah, I mean, we're just, I'm just having such a good time. I wish I had a little bit more help, Jonathan. I could tell you that. But yeah. outside of that, it's all good. Yeah. I mean, That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, I've got like 900 million things going on all day long. And, I, you know, you always feel that you're not being, you know, you're busy, but not productive. We, I think we all right. know that feeling. Yeah. So, yeah. I need to, I need to be more productive, Jonathan. I understand that feeling. Your name's not Jason. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, so, okay, so one last question for you. If if you had some, mm-hmm. I mean, one of the listeners out there, I know mean, there's there's tons of different types listening to this show, fortunately. But with that being mm-hmm. said, if you were to say, okay, what one action would you suggest to someone listening to unleash their own greatness, their potential to be more in this next mm-hmm. week? What is one thing you'd say, okay, do this and it'll make a huge change in your life? Uh, one of them I really do believe is this, the, you know, the subliminal stuff. Secondly is I love mindmovies.com. Mindmovies.com is, you know, friends of mine that live here in, uh, in, in California as well. And they created this fabulous software. It's been around for quite a, a, a number of years and it's a, it's a, it's a video vision board. Mm-hmm. So you actually create your vision of your life and how you want to see it by watching it every day. You talk about reticular, reticular activating systems. <laughs> so they, the, the platform itself is really cool. It takes, it's very user friendly, takes almost no time to, 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 you know, to, um, to make this video and you put in your own pictures or you use theirs or your own music or you use theirs, your own wording, or you can use some of their suggested uh, phrases and you pull together the video that you watch every morning. You can make it three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you want, but you watch your life in front of you unfold. And I'll tell you something, um, nine out of the 10 things that I put on that video six, seven years, six years ago ha- has happened. That's awesome. That's it's a pretty cool. cool tool. So make lists, keep your, you know, the, the visual is real important. So I have two vision boards at home. One is a spiritual vision board and the other one is the, the, um, Oh Lordy, what do I call it? It's the spiritual vision board. Hold on one second. It's the spiritual and the, um, you know, the, the stuff I want to see happen in my life, you know, so right. one's like spiritual and the other one is my actual life. I have the black American express card up there. I've got Bill Gates up there. I've got Oprah up there. I've got, you know, all these things that, that the home that I want, the Bentley that I want, I mean, all this stuff yeah. on the, you know, um, and so I can honestly say that even some of that, I don't have the black yet, but, uh, you know, but uh, a lot of the things like, for example, I was on Oprah's, uh, XM radio show. I didn't quite make it to the show show, but I was on Oprah's XM radio show. Yeah. I've got my book up there. Well, the two books are happening now. And I've got, and so there's like all of these, uh, the physical, that's what I call it. The spiritual and the physical, uh, uh, virtual, uh, vision board. So the visuals are really important. You, if you see it, it's so much easier to make it come true, to make it happen. So I would say mindmovies.com is absolutely fabulous. And one of them, create the, the kind of atmosphere in your, in your work uh, uh, life that, you, that will help you be the most productive. And again, for me, that's my, you know, my essential oils and my, the soft, soft music and um, you know, my, my tea, all of those things that I absolutely savor in life that make me feel like, ah, oh, this is going to be another amazing day as I'm starting out that day. So I don't know if these are things that are, you know, earth shattering, but they seem to work for me. And then again, when you're starting to get into that overwhelmed space, just go, why am I stop and think about the why, not necessarily the how, not how you're going to get there, but why you want to get there. And my why is the position and the condition of women. My place as a leader of social change in this world it was meant for women. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you don't mind us guys around. That's good too. I <laughs> love our, I love guys. We love our guys. Krista, thank you so much for being on the show with us. This has been awesome. Again, you can find her on her website, which will be in the links below, but it is again, your website is? 
ClarissaBurt.com. And you guys can follow me on my radio show too called In the Limelight with Clarissa Burt on Voice America's Influencers Channel every Tuesday at 11 o'clock a.m. PST. Oh, look at that. You can tell you're on radio every Tuesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You should hear what I say. And we will be right back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I love it. That's awesome. Well, I, it's been a joy. You are amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, well, thank you so much for asking me to be on. I really appreciate it. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. This is Jonathan Mitchell, Unleash Greatness. We'll tune in next time. Thank you so much.